Chapter 30 of Writers and Royals by M.L. Gray. In this chapter, we have something new for you, our first collaboration with an author. M.L. Gray has answered some of her questions about the book, including what was her favorite scene, what made her want to publish the story, and what's her advice for aspiring authors. If you want to know the answer to these questions and many others, then follow along. We post on Wednesdays. Turn the page. Welcome to another chapter of Between the Pages. If this is your first time joining us on our podcast, we welcome you. We are your hosts. My name is Nesma. And I'm Hanin. We host this podcast together where we review and recommend books for you to read. Uh, we usually divide our uh, chapter into two parts. One, we begin with the non-spoiler, mm -hmm. where we just say why we picked up the book, would we recommend it or not, and so on. And then we go into the next part with warning, <laughs> <laughs> where we review the book down to every last detail. Yep. And today we have uh, Writers and Royals by Emil Gray. Um, this episode is pretty special because now we have a collaboration with the author. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> she reached out to us and she wanted us to read her book and review it on the podcast. And now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I remember telling you, you no, know, like I want this book to surprise me, you know. Yeah. And reading uh, the synopsis, I had there was this line where, "What if um, eyes can tell if you have powers or which powers you have?" And I was, hmm, interesting. Okay. Very interesting. <laughs> uh, but our collaboration with ML Gray was. Um, it wasn't like a full conversation. We sent her our questions and yeah. she answered them by recording. So we're sort of going to edit them in the episode. Uh, but she sounded like someone who we would have had a great conversation with. True. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately it's like the time difference and... Yeah, yeah. It w it's easier mm -hmm. for her to send her answers and we just react to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway... Um, we'll start like we always do. We have the summary, uh, why we picked it up. I think we just explained that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, would we recommend it? So, for the summary. On Goodreads, it says, Emery is a royal, a princess of Enland. As is tradition, she must have a knight at her side as her protector. The only way to appoint one is through the trials. Her challengers from the five regions of Enland must compete for the infamous title of Princess's Knight. The problem, though, is that the people of Enland are split into two categories, writers and royals. Finding the perfect knight may be the last of her worries. War is coming to Enland. Declan is a writer, an upriser, an anarchist. He mistrusts the jewels, the sovereign family of Enland. Yet he is offering himself up as a challenger in the trials. The mistress, the mistress, the leader of the rioters, has a mission for him. The first step is for him to become the princess's knight. He is ready for the task. Until he actually meets Emery and discovers that betraying her would be much more difficult than he thought. <laughs> hmm, you're reading this and the whole book is going behind my eyes. <laughs> I wow, yeah. like... When I read the synopsis, mm -hmm. I was very intrigued because yeah. simply the idea of the story itself, like someone who hates the royal family but still offers himself as a knight, I'm like, oh, this can't go well. <laughs> <laughs> like, what if he's yeah. like an assassin who's planning to kill the princess? Or I don't know. It was like something in my head that played out and I just wanted to know what the story was yes. about, you know? <laughs> I thought that would be like intriguing of it, so the, the love-hate thing where like, you yeah. know. But it turned out to be something different, where, yeah. which you will know when you read the book. <laughs> but I mean, also this book goes into under my like love for stories that has royalty in it and uh, princesses and like I have this whole bunch of novels that I've read just like I read them after each other like I had this phase where like I'm gonna read everything that has a princess in it like, from the selection to uh, I don't know the uh, royal we yeah the royal we to wanted uh, no to hunted by Megan Spooner you know it has this oh fairy tale uh, feel to it and yes this book was like a fairy tale a very yeah. modern and full fairy tale other mm -hmm. than something with the grim brothers exactly 
where like it's kada not Disney like but it's us like I don't know. True. And I wanted to say as well that um, this is a young adult novel. Um, mm. I think we didn't really, like, we're not in the category <laughs> of, like, yeah, teenagers anymore. And I could really feel that while I was reading it. <laughs> Me too. I was like, oh my god, I grew up. <laughs> I was, like, reading, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, am I that old? <laughs> I feel old. <laughs> like, I'm only 22, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was I was surprised by how um, different the feeling is, and it's pretty PG thirteen. So mm. if you're worried about anything, don't worry about that. It's like oh, airplane, airplane. I hadn't missed those. <laughs> I thought I missed them before, <laughs> but I hadn't. <laughs> There's something about the story that is so smooth. You know, mm. it's different. Like. Um, like I don't want to say too much because this is still the non-spoiler part. I feel like I want I have to I have more to say mm-hmm. where I'm not afraid to spoil anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but this is just our experience reading the book. It's just yeah, we felt old. <laughs> yeah, we did feel old <laughs> a little. <laughs> but like it was it was very nice. I I had missed this part of reading where not being feeling old, but like I mean, <laughs> I mean not uh, that part. No, not that part. I mean the the fairy tale part where like. I know I'm reading a fairy tale. I know, like, this is a princess prince knight situation. Mm-hmm. Where, like, yeah. It was refreshing, mm-hmm. you know? It was really refreshing to read something different than what we're used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, if, like, would we recommend it? I guess. Yes. Yes. If yes. you're, like, in the 14 to 17 ish age, I think you would love mm. this book. And I think even it, our age, I, well, as well. Like, I mean, you would get this feeling of the selection, um, Throne of Glass. I remember when we started, we had this feeling about it. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Uh, a Court of Thrones and Roses, of course. Like, yeah. there is this feeling about it. Like, I don't know. There is, for the selection part, for example, there is the challengers. Yeah. So there is, like, she's picking from them. It's like, you know? It's you know when I had that scene with, like, the trials and everything? It's like, this, um... Is this a spoiler? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, I was like, this feeling of, like, you know if you've watched The Gladiator mm. or... Uh, have you watched Pompeii? No, where... no, I watched The Gladiator. Oh, okay. Pompeii. And there's, like, always the scene where, like, The Gladiator is, like, fighting in the in mm. the ring. And they're always on, are in their box. Yeah, yes. and it's always a princess watching The Gladiator. Uh-huh. And she's, like, always afraid. Oh, no, what if he dies? No. <laughs> Yeah, it had this it has classical this, feel yeah, to it. It yeah, had that yeah. feeling, yeah. In reference to the question of uh, would we recommend this book, there, um, Emil Gray herself has answered the question. But not to us. Like not to us. No, no, Goodreads no. This is, this is on, <laughs> yeah, this is on Goodreads and we'd just like to share it with you. So, interview with the author. It says, the question is, why should I read this book, if you're wondering? If you like plots with surprises, a strong female character, good versus evil, a wicked queen, and an epic romance, then you should read this book. It is one of those stories that holds you captive from start to finish. True. <laughs> <laughs> you will not want to put it down. Declan and Emery are both exceptional, relatable characters faced with obstacles that end up drawing them together. Read it. You'll be glad you did. <laughs> and we are. And we are. You know, I think one of the things that bothered me while I was reading of Writers and Royals is that I was reading it as an ebook. Oh, <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> and it like I, I'm very get very easily demotivated when mm. I have an ebook. Like I always like to have the book in my hand, you know? Yeah. And, and it was know, a it struggle. Was, like yeah. I would read and then Oh, I haven't finished much. It's it's on my phone. My iPad is yeah. like... Uh, you can see your progress when uh, you have the book, you know? Yeah. It's, and the smell of the pages and everything, you know? <laughs> and this book felt like it needs to be a book. I need to, to, to have that smell around me while I was reading it because it's... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it needed to be a paperback in my hand. I don't know. Yeah, right. But anyway... <laughs> yeah. All right, we had some questions for the author, and it's sort of an interview, but not a live interview, so (laughs) we sent her some questions, and she sent us her answers back. Before we start the questions, I think we should read you the author's bio so you have an idea of who she is. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so, Emma Gray is an Amazon bestseller. 
She writes epic romantic fantasies for teens and young adults. She believes that no story is complete without some sort of romance and plenty of action. Yeah, we got that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, She is a fiction novelist and prefers to write the genre she loves to read, fantasy. Gray was born and raised in Southern California, but has lived in practically every state in the Southwest. She currently lives in beautiful Florida with her husband and three children. Hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Gray has been writing stories since she could read. Her first series was a collection of short one-page narratives titled uh, Selena Stories. Over the years, she moved on to writing novels. Her first book, The Other Worlds, was written during her high school and college days. She graduated from Brian Young University. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, with with a bachelor in American studies and minor in communications, along with writing, she coaches figure skating. Wow! <laughs> in her free time, she enjoys exploring everything Florida has to offer and skating with her kids. I love that skating part. That's so interesting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we should have asked her about that as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the part where like the bio says that she practically lived in every state in the southwest it gave me an idea of like that's why she had like regions and like each region has a specific culture to it i guess and yeah i thought about that's where it comes from Mm -hmm. anyway let's start the questions yeah the first question was what was the idea of the book at the beginning and when it was just a thought how was it born So let's see what she has to say. So for a writers and royals, this might sound weird, but the first idea I had of this story was I wrote out the first trial, like I drew it out and I'm not an artist by any means, Uh, but I went and I had this idea and I was like, what if I made a trial out of this and like an obstacle course? And I just, I drew out that, uh, that first trial, it came to I started thinking of these characters and uh, the whole story formed around this first trial Uh, and so that's where this whole story was born okay I mean it's understandable that it's just like one scene where everything is born yeah I kind of relate to that like when I write stories Mm -hmm. haven't published anything yet but (laughs) (laughs) just write them Hanin reads them (laughs) yep (laughs) just my friends read them but it's always like you have this one scene in your head and you base everything on top of it Mm -hmm. you know you just like build and build and build it up yeah so I guess it makes sense (laughs) all right um moving on to the next question yeah and the question was what was challenging about writing this book i was very interested to uh to hear the answer to that i think the challenging part uh is just finishing it out to the end <laughs> uh, i mean i always know or maybe the middle really it's probably just the middle because i always know how i want to start a book and how i want to end a book but the middle part, like with the getting from point A to point B is where it gets challenging and uh, making sure that the characters develop into the people that they need to be at the end. That's also challenging. Uh, so that would probably be the most challenging part of writing this book of Writers and Royals. Yeah, like when I had this um, question project or. Oh, okay. oh no. The, yes, the yeah. question. Well, like, yeah, I had this in mind as well. Like, when I had my, my project in screen screenwriting at college, um, we had to write, basically, a short script, <laughs> each student, like, and, um, okay, I have these characters uh, together in a scene, and then I'm like, hmm, this is how it starts, and this is where I want it to end, but what to do <laughs> to get there, you know? Uh, like, what to do in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> How do what, I get to the end? <laughs> how do I make them... What, what do I make them do in the middle to get to this point? And how do I want that to develop? And yeah. it was really the hardest part. The, the, the middle is always the hardest part. Mm-hmm. Like, I've taken this uh, creative writing course. 
and they they said the same thing like um it's always the middle that is the toughest it's always like uh to keep going is mm. the toughest you know you you can already imagine the whole story in your mind you know but it's the the hard part is putting it on paper okay. and making it sound good mm-hmm. as well like not just writing it to make yeah. it sound good and to really pan out the world and it's um I think uh, she's d- done a really good job with the uh, writers and worlds. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. The, the, I can see that while reading, I can see the steps of where this is going, the small things that like, yeah. she made happen or mm-hmm. changed between them and the dynamic. I I like that. I guess um, like something you experienced was when like you had an idea in, for a plot point or yeah. something in your story and you would talk to me about it. And then... Later on, you started not writing these things because you talked to me about it. Because I yeah, talked too much yeah. about it, yeah. Yeah, I guess that is <laughs> that... challenging for you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. I mean, it's a conflict because I like talking about it because it inspires me more. Mm, but if yeah. I talk too much about it, then I... I Get demotivated, I, I, I Yeah, guess. Like, it's... A, it's already out there, right? It's a paradox, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to the next question. We know that we are constantly influenced by what movies or TV shows we watch or books we read and people we surround ourselves with. What movies, TV shows, and books shaped of writers and royals and gave you more ideas and inspiration? So let's... <laughs> <laughs> let's listen up. <laughs> so for question four, that's kind of a tough question for me because I have read so many books and watch so much tv and movies right and from all of what i've watched i've gleaned pieces of my different stories that i want to like incorporate into one and so i mean for for, of writers and royals for the swift shadow series in general i think i've taken a lot from some sarah moss books and then uh i mean victoria hanley too and i mean i victoria hanley is less known so her her book, uh, The Seer and the Sword, that book definitely has helped shape of writers and royals. And then as for TV shows, uh, basically anything with like an epic story. I don't know, like, you know, hero wins in the end. I can't say that necessarily like there's one show that I can pinpoint it on. Same with books. I can't say that there's just one book to pinpoint it on because I... I enjoy taking little bits and pieces from everyone, everything that I read and uh, putting it into what I want all into like one book or series in this case. I guess this question was annoying. Sorry. <laughs> it's like asking someone, what is your favorite film? And I'm like, no, no. I don't, I don't have <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not like, just one. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to have a favorite book, a favorite character, a favorite film. Um, but yes, she's right. Like when people ask me the annoying question of, <laughs> uh, "Do you learn from what you read?" Like in the novel, then I'm like, Any, "Did you re- learn a specific thing?" And I'm like, "No, it's just a collective." Like, yeah, like yeah, she yeah. said, it's like of all that I've read, it's just I can't pinpoint something like she said as well. Or like, <laughs> I guess we were just curious, you know? Mm. Maybe there were like three special books where she combined something, or yeah, yeah I. We just wanted to know, I guess. <laughs> no, no, it just stemmed from the idea that, that I I remember telling you were telling me, I know there are some characters that you can't flesh out, and I and I just told you like make them a mix of Nisman Katniss and make the other one in Nisman Feyre, and make yeah. you know it's like <laughs> I remember telling you that, and I that what like inspired that's what the question in, here, inspired, like, yeah, yeah. I can see that because there are some specific books that also inspire. Or specific movies that inspire some of my short stories. You know, mm-hmm. there's this um, Phantom Thread movie. I You haven't watched it, no, right? No, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, there was this scene in the, in the movie that really intrigued me. So I was like, okay, I want to kind of write it out and see what, what I can do from there, you mm-hmm. know? And um, it's like like everything around us, everything we see, everything we watch, read, it influences um, our creative process, you know? Yeah. Everything comes into it. And it's basically a collective um, of like many books and you've made your own out of those ideas. So, yeah. yeah. And not just our creativity, it's just who we are. Like, yeah. We, 
we become all of those characters and exactly plus our background and our upbringing and yeah. like everything yeah mm-hmm. so that was interesting <laughs> okay next question um I, I know this was a weird one we just were very curious about Which it one? Um, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, regarding the title of the book why did you choose to name it of writers and royals and instead of just ri- just writers and royals what uh, was the idea behind that yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was weird because i was i was i was reading the title and i was like of writers and royals okay maybe she had an idea behind it or maybe it's like Hmm. Like, what is it that's yeah. made her say... Like, because I was thinking, where does the... I don't know why I think about it too much. This is probably too much overthinking into it. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, let's listen to what she has to say. So for question five about the title, I think that uh, that might be overthinking it a little bit because I didn't actually... think about that <laughs> I mean I just thought a uh, rioters and royals sounded good and that's where the title came from and it really is just you know the whole thing is about Emery and Declan right and one's a rioter and one's a royal and uh, it's it just seemed to roll off the tongue better I'm sorry it's not super complicated it just sounded good <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, in my head, I was imagining it maybe it's like a story of rioters and royals, and mm-hmm. she just took out that part with a story, a story because it would be too long. Mm-hmm. So maybe she just made it of rioters and royals. But turns out it's not that complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Overthinking. <laughs> hey, I'm a literature person, okay? I analyze everything, <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> Like, in my class, we need to analyze everything. Like, when we finish the book or mm-hmm. finish uh, uh, anything and there's a title, we need to reflect back on the title. Like, why did the author choose this title and not another title? Mm-hmm. And we always need to reflect the title on the story. And then yeah. there's, like, a whole analysis part. And I'm like, I think I just thought too much into it. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess, yes, in this novel, uh, the title, is, it, like, reflects so much of the story. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does, of course. But then you you also wonder what's like what's a rioter in this case, you mm, know? Yeah. Why is it like who are these writers? Like you can imagine royals. Royals are easy yeah. to picture. Yeah. But who is the writer, you know? Like it's yeah. always so it was intriguing. Okay, next question. Declan and Emerald are pretty unique names. Was there what re- was there a reason you chose these names specifically? No, not really. I just like the names. I know it's pretty basic. <laughs> But Declan, I mean, I've heard Declan around. I mean, it's been around for, like, generations, right? And I happened upon it, like, when I was watching Once Upon a Time, uh, one of the characters is named Declan in it. And I was like, hey, I really like that name. And I decided to name my character after it. It's not super exciting there. But as for Emerald, Emerald originally was going to have Emerald Eyes. And then uh, I changed it all up and I decided to make her have Silver Eyes. because I liked that better than I was a little bit more unique than just green eyes uh but I kept the name emerald because I loved that calling her Emery out of emerald yeah and they were cute <laughs> <laughs> I love the names because I was wondering when when I read um A Court of Thorns and Roses and we had the name Reese mm. okay And I looked up the meaning of Reese. What does it mean? And it means passion. Oh, I haven't done that. Okay, for that now. So it was so unique, you know? Like sometimes um, the the idea or the meaning of a name can add more more depth to the character. Yeah. So I was wondering if that was the case in the story. But it's just the names. She just liked them. <laughs> you know, I remember when I was in high school, like, I decided that I would write a book, okay? <laughs> And then, and then I I started looking up names for my characters and I opened the Oxford Dictionary, I think, the one I have, and it has names in the end and I was like, mm, highlighting the names I like <laughs> going on over them. It was as simple as that, yeah. <laughs> But then I went to like quote one scene and that was it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that was it? That was it. <laughs> Just one scene? Just one scene. <laughs> 
That must have been exhausting for you. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, in the novel, you have chosen jewels for the names of your character. What inspired you to do that? Emerald inspired me to do that because uh, I love that, that name, Emerald, right? And so I was like, oh, what if I named all the royals after jewels, after crown? Like, it's just, I don't have like a lot of big inspiration. It's more like just like little thoughts that come in and be like, hey, this would be cool if I do it this way. And there are lots of jewels and it would make sense that the royalty would be named after jewels. And it's like the history of the royals. So I'm sorry, it's not, again, not really intriguing, but I, yeah, it was just a little thought I had and it ended up being working out really well. No, I guess it is intriguing, like hearing the logic behind every creative decision. I love that. Like when I watch um, short mo movie programs in festivals, I feel like I want to ask these questions to the Film, to the filmmakers. filmmakers How, you, yeah. What was the logic behind this decision and that decision? Why did you make it like that? And yeah. tell me how you made the film. Like the 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 story of making it is as good as the film itself. Like yeah. And I think it's also um, the thought process of mm. like, okay, I love the name Emerald. What can I do with that? And it's yeah. like uh, that. Ins that itself is an inspiration. Like emerald is your uh, is your inspiration basically in this situation. So I think it's also um, wonderful to see how a story can develop simply by the things you like. You know, like if you hadn't liked the name emerald, then you wouldn't have developed it into the jewels. And like it's a whole process. You know, everything <laughs> yeah. is on top of the other. <laughs> so yeah. It really worked out. <laughs> it di really did. <laughs> okay. Um, now, let's start with a spoiler. Fair warning. <laughs> Spoiling. Ging, ging, ging. <laughs> ging, 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 ging. Um, I th think I want to start with a few comments that I have before we get into the questions. Okay. Like I said before, uh, I think I would have enjoyed the book a little bit more if I was younger. Mm -hmm. And... That's basically one point. But my other point is um, there was something about the book that I wasn't used to. Like I'm like like the books that I normally read. Mm. Something was taken away a little in the story. Um, it was the fear for the characters, you know? Yeah. You know, like you, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. it's mm. not as intense mm -hmm. as I'm used to, you know? Yeah. And it was kind of refreshing to read something where I don't have to worry all the time about yeah. them. But there was this one moment in the story where Declan, uh, right before um, his parents uh, offered uh, lives, uh, years from their lives to, to make their son come back to life, mm -hmm. that was when I was really scared for him. Yeah. You know, that yeah, was very too, yes. a moment where I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is where he's gonna die right now. Here, right now, I'm ready. And I'm like, and I'm like, like, okay. If he dies, what happens now? What are the, you know? I kept like, yeah. And it was um, like because at the beginning of the story, he has trial after trial after trial, and like emeralds. It's like a breeze for him. Yeah, and like uh, emeralds foreshadowing constantly makes you see that okay, there's literally nothing's gonna happen to mm. him. Like I'm not really afraid for him, but yeah. right after. He came back to life. That fear was gone completely, you know? Like, it wasn't there at all. So any yeah. fights they had after that, I knew he wasn't going to die because he already had his big moment in the novel. So I think I, I would have um, preferred if there was more fear for the character because it mm. makes it more, like... Intense. In, yes. More intense. And you feel the conflict more. like Yeah. yeah. But again, it was refreshing to read mm. something where there isn't that f fear constantly. You know, where yeah, you can yeah. finally relax and just sit back and enjoy the story and enjoy the love story, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> the love story was cute. It was simple. You it know? was so simple. It's like, yeah. like the part where she, was on, where she started calling him Deck, you know. It's like these simple things were like just having a name for him and yeah i don't know yeah and seeing her in the moonlight and like there are these small parts mm -hmm. you know 
it was so interesting as well. Um, one of my favorite scenes was um, where Emerald is discovered as the mistress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> Like, even even though we knew early on like we had this point of view of her where we know that yes. she's related to the writers in a way like she has yeah, a yeah, connection yeah, yeah. there and like Declan you, know. you can already tell by the beginning of the story that emerald is not your usual princess mm. she's like um she's like independent a little and she knows what she wants and she's like not afraid to she's not afraid of conflict but once that the mistress uh thing got revealed they, she was like Um, I saw her in a different light, yeah, you know? I saw yeah. her as more of a badass, you know? <laughs> like, wow, this woman knows her ways. <laughs> <laughs> and like you waiting that she, okay, she's kidnapped and now we'll see what the mistress will do. Is yeah. she like a bad well, uh, or like just... At uh, first, I had in my head that her mother is the mistress, mm-hmm. you know, kind of, even though it wasn't said that she is yeah. the mistress, she works for the mistress. But still, I had this idea that maybe his mother, her, his mother is lying mm. and she was the mistress and she just pretends not to be. I don't know. There was something about it that I had in my head because his mother had like a strong impression at the beginning of the novel. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but it turns out she's not, not the mistress. <laughs> yeah. And the way, like when that created a conflict between them, I guess it wasn't that strong. Like, it was yeah. this... It was... He, he accepted it way too fast. <laughs> In a way, yeah. 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 But I mean, other things had to happen, so he had to yeah, move exactly. on. Yeah, exactly. We need to move on. Yeah. We don't have time for conflict here. <laughs> yes. And I loved, loved, loved the idea of the, their eyes telling what powers they have. Yes. <laughs> and, and like those cute moments where he like just points at his eye. I can imagine it like, you know, <laughs> it was so good. And I okay. love that moment uh, where, oh my God, I forgot his name. When they went back to the castle and there was like a whole large hole in her room. And then this character came out. Uh, something uh, with a P. Py- Pyron? Um, you know who I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, they were they were on the bed, and he came and was like, you're a pair, aren't you? <laughs> I'm like, wow, you, can you tell that easily? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was like, yeah, my parents were a pair. <laughs> wow, interesting. I, um, turns out this is a thing. <laughs> yeah. I love how it's rare, you know, like mm. the pair thing. That's not everyone, and not everyone... is doing it anymore yeah yeah i wish it was a thing in this world <laughs> pairing honestly me too <laughs> you know like something i don't know if 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 it's like what's wrong with me i guess i don't know like um there's nothing know- <laughs> wrong with you i mean <laughs> okay i'm getting to my point <laughs> Uh, I mean, Grey, i guess at the beginning of the novel she definitely described the characters how they look um But I guess after a while, I forgot. Like, I couldn't imagine their features What they're clearly. looking like, like yeah. yeah. she hadn't referred to them in a while, maybe. And I was like, and I... Creating your own thing. They became blank. No, they became blank for me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> that is something that oh. bothered me, I guess. But like, yeah. I think I was... Um, I, I always do this with every other novel. I <laughs> just... Whatever the, the author says, describes the characters, I just... Ignore that and create my own character in my head. <laughs> like, oh, Declan has black hair? Nope, not in my head. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it happens a lot. Like, when I'm telling this now, for example, like, oh, this one has black hair, his brown eyes. He has brown eyes? Like, <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> oh, um, Nesma, did you really read the book? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I swear I did. <laughs> It's just, I completely, like, overlook the fact that he has brown eyes yeah i just overlook it like i don't know if that's rude like to the author i don't know i don't know <laughs> but i just do it i'm sorry not sorry i guess <laughs> it's just when i read i need to create my own I, yeah I guess. and like there are other details like the color of someone's dress or like, yeah it's and like, it's really important to the story but like she's i don't care she, 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 i don't know <laughs> why do you do that <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's just like we can't be alone in this. Probably other people do it too. <laughs> yeah. We just don't know about it. <laughs> anyway, so 
let's start with the questions. So we had a couple. Uh, the first one is, was there a specific scene that really made you feel connected to the characters? That would be when Emery and Declan escape out of the palace and go down to the people's ball. When they go out and have a good time with the commoners, that that really spoke to me. I mean, I, mean, I know I wrote it, but <laughs> it felt like the characters were speaking through me. Like it felt, uh, I could really feel like Emery getting out there and super excited to go dance on with uh, a bunch of commoners that she didn't have, she doesn't usually get to do, and Declan taking her out and being all conspirat- conspiratorial with her, and that they both forgot. That they weren't that they were princess and knight or a princess and challenger, and that they could they just were wanting to be with each other and have a good time. That's probably one of those uh, one of those scenes that are up there for me. I kind of love that this is her like mm. um, what what spoke to her, like where she feels connected to the characters because it's so raw in that moment, you know, yeah, like, it's always nice, even if you see it in a movie, like the princess going out. And like mingling with the with the commoners and, and like, like dancing the dancing, I love the dancing. The dance was amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love Bardo. I love how she described it as well. Like it was very detailed and not in a boring way, of course. No, no yeah, way, like you're you're doing it with them, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I love dancing. I wish I could dance. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't tried that yet. No. <laughs> I think where, I don't know where I felt most connected to the characters. I think it's more when they, when they bond, Mm. you know, over their powers or over, I love it when it gets quiet, you Mm. know, I love it when it's just the two of them, you know, and it's like, um, oh, I think I love that mo. Oh, I just remember. Okay. Okay. Uh I think one of my, well, actually that's the next question, but anyway, I'm going to answer it. Mm. The, my like one of my favorite scenes was when Declan, when she, when Emerald was crying in the room, and he could feel her crying, and he was so angry with her, mm-hmm. but he went yes. and comforted her anyway. <laughs> oh, that's that's love. That's love when you hate a person but still want to hug them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was also yeah. interesting. I loved how he they they, they did they didn't reveal. That they could hear each other's thoughts or uh-huh. feel each other's emotions <laughs> right away, you know. Like, just yeah, maybe um weird, but like let's go comfort her. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, and he... I love that scene when they were in the kitchen and they were speaking to each other, and their mom was like witness a thing between them. Yeah, yeah. like, are you talking to each other? <laughs> are you a pair? <laughs> no, no, the, uh, Emery blurted it out. Yeah, we're a pair. <laughs> we're a pair. <laughs> It's like, geez, you could have just, like, buffered it a little. <laughs> like, Declan was like, wait, okay, we're doing this now? <laughs> I didn't have my breakfast yet. <laughs> yeah. And I love that, that his relationship with his mother, in a way. So, same, yeah. same, same. I love it's that like, he's well. that beautiful boy. <laughs> <laughs> Are your cheeks hurting from smiling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Why do we always laugh so much on the podcast? I, I want to know. know. Like, what is it when we sit down and start recording that makes us laugh all the time? <sighs> okay. Next question is, Not what laughing. is your <laughs> what is your favorite scene in this novel? And who is your favorite character? I mean, that is, I think, the most important thing you should ask any author. <laughs> when really? they write their story. Yeah, okay. what is your favorite? Because it kind of reflects on the story doesn't it like everyone has a favorite scene in the in the novel but it's Mm -hmm. like what is the favorite scene of the author you know yeah (laughs) because she's the one writing them (laughs) my favorite scene would be when Declan takes Emery up to his cottage in the woods his they go and do the tringa on their his private his private little round I love that one that scene I love the Taranga like I I guess that, this can go back to what book inspired me but the Taranga came from the Golden Compass like straight up came from the Golden Compass I mean without staffs the Golden Compass didn't have staffs in it but I I read that book and I, I immediately thought of, the, of this amazing dance and the Taranga 
And I love that in the scene when he takes her up there that they, Emery starts taking on some of his abilities and he takes on some of her abilities and the whole thing is just, it's probably one of my favorite scenes. If not, like, I think it's my favorite, like tops. And then as for my favorite character, Emery, <laughs> I love Emery. And then Declan's like right behind her though, because those two are my, they're, they're the main characters and I love them both. I guess it makes sense that Emery is her favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect anything else. <laughs> then why did you ask the question? <laughs> well, maybe someone else wants to know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so uh, the the scene of the Tiranga is actually a very interesting scene. It was mm. it was like, is it a dance? Is it a fight? I don't What is it? <laughs> it's so disciplined and surprising with their like powers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they kept challenging and... each other more and more and more. It was intense. <laughs> yeah, it was. I also like. I loved like at the beginning. I was why why is the author telling us um, the plan like of Emery being kidnapped and like and Declan not knowing? Then why should we know? Mm-hmm. And then it turns out that's not <laughs> that's, that's not even the plot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> that, like, you remember when I told you I want this book to surprise me? That surprised me. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I was like, hmm, then why are, why do we know from now, from the very beginning? Like, and then it's revealed again and again and again. Like, yeah. and then, boom. <laughs> She's boom. the mistress. She's the mistress. It was her plan all along. <laughs> it's brilliant, actually. Like, from the author and from Emery, of course, that, like, she would reconnect her country like that yeah or shall i say kingdom <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is <laughs> yeah okay um the time period of the novel resembles something like british medieval history is that is that correct and if it is if it is why did you choose to make it a kingdom over something more american as someone with an american background i guess the author was like confused by why i asked that but um like of her being from an american background i mean like we're here in egypt it's a republic as well so, i mean it's a diplomatic system uh and not like well we used to have a king like we used to have yeah king i'm sad i missed queen. that part of history <laughs> <laughs> i mean i wish i was born then i it was awful a lot I mean, for us, but... Yeah, I, it was awful at that time, yeah, but it, like, the if, idea... Or if I was born in the different, in a in the wrong social <laughs> class, I guess, <laughs> it would have been awful to me. But imagine if I was, like, one of the, like, court people and, like, go have the balls and the dances uh -huh. and... Okay, mm. keep dreaming. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's anyway, hear what she yeah. has to say. Okay. So it is a little bit, so Enland, yeah, sure, is more like British, uh, but more like Regency era rather than medieval. And then you have Cruth, or I guess N is more like Regency area. And then Cruth, because is more like Scottish-Irish influence. But then if you go over to Glavenrill, uh, it's, it's more American uh, with, I, I think, I think of it more of like Adobe style. And then the Midlands, yeah, is again more like Regency. And then Anexia, uh, in my mind, that's more like an American, like your regular, like historical American place. It's still not, still not American. None of these places are even British. Like it's just influential, I guess, in my mind. Uh, I guess in, but you don't know that in of writers and royals that these different regions have these different. Uh, different feels to them because that's all done in entwined paths that's in book two when we look at more deeply into the regions and so if you go to book two entwined paths you'll find out all about the different regions <laughs> okay we'll read it <laughs> um, but yeah i guess what the, i guess why i asked that question was um because i'm fascinated with the britain basically <laughs> And I found a little bit of that there. And Britain is always in my head as, as like the fairy tales as well. And I had that feeling in the book. So I just wanted to know if it yeah. had influenced her more than making it more of a... I mean, it's sometimes hard. Thing. It's yeah. sometimes hard to imagine like the fashion and the etiquette and like the uh, the, the, 
like even the architecture of the time mm. when you when it's fiction you know you can't really imagine it because we we can all, all always relate things to their era you mm. know like we know what buildings in paris look like we know what buildings in england look like we know like and it's like um we can really sometimes imagine it if we know the era specifically but mm. in fiction it's not that easy because it's a whole entire world like compared to a uh, court of thorns and roses for example it's like a whole world on its own like it, <laughs> yeah. it is in the human world but it's not our human world so it could be different mm -hmm. like they might have those um like v-shaped roofs or they might not have them you know, yeah like, you we know, never know we'll never know and you know? even the clothes like it's not related mainly to like it was related to regions but like to characters as well each character right. had their own style yeah and that was outrageous <laughs> so, uh -huh. and, like, so yeah. i think i just googled regency era and the the costumes look more like um pride and prejudice mm. you know like ah, at the time. my favorite <laughs> <laughs> okay my favorite time yeah yeah i mean look at those Oh, those are pretty. Sorry, guys, you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, why was it important for King Onyx to rush the process of finding Emery a knight? That was also another question. Yeah, it was something that kept persisting in my head while reading. Why is why is it so essential important. and and now in the now like yeah. so urgent? Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't so important for everyone else, but it was important to him. He is, uh, you'll find out again in, in Twine Paths, because it digs a little deeper into his personality. Uh, he was just a super concerned father. I mean, he, I mean, he had trauma. His his wife had died, and then his, his son had been murdered, and he was nervous for his daughters. Uh, and again, like, it talks more about this and that. He feels a little guilty. Uh, you'll find out more in, in Twine Paths. Twine Paths is a great book. It tells you, like, fills in those details that you might not have gotten out of, of Writers and Royals. <laughs> Again, I intriguing. I think she just spoiled something. <laughs> that he didn't die, or maybe. Who knows? No, I think yeah. maybe they're just, like, reflecting on the history of yeah. Enland, and they're finding out more about him. It doesn't necessarily mean that he didn't die. Okay. I guess now we need to read the book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to know if he did die or not. <laughs> I but think yeah. It, yeah, I think now that you say it, like this question hadn't even popped into my head, but when you asked it, I was like, "Huh, actually, that's kind of interesting because I haven't thought about this before. It's actually pretty weird that he wanted to do this urgently, so quickly, like, so yes. urgently, yeah. Uh -huh. But again, it's like related to his trauma and his wife died and everything, so he wanted to protect his his uh his daughter as much mm -hmm. as as much as he can." in the situation that knowing he is. that she's the heir of course yeah and uh, right because yeah. they didn't reveal who was the older sister right. <laughs> that's also a very interesting part uh -huh. okay <laughs> just like clicked now yeah and but now i'm wondering and i think it's too late because <laughs> we asked her everything um like if he knew the the the, the nature of the bond uh, between the knight and the princess hmm. and if it was really like a nice his bond plan. or like yeah if it was his plan or was it he was, was it his plan to yeah. to pair her all along with Declan yeah maybe he knew something about Declan and he wanted him as well Not that's just why Declan. he rushed it and I also ask myself why is he so okay with Declan and he wasn't at the beginning like he gave him that look when they were meeting yeah, for yeah, the yeah. first time and yeah, then true why is he why does he not care which hmm. which uh night she gets maybe you know? we'll get those answers in the second book who knows <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right moving on yeah i mean and and before we move on like this book it didn't give us a cliffhanger sort of no but a lot of Thank questions God. that like we would <laughs> May yes, we would want to know in the second book. You yeah, know? it's not like, like they're in mortal danger and cut. <laughs> no, it's like more. Oh, sorry, I'm talking film. Imagine <laughs> if they did that. <laughs> no, I'm like I I was glad that there wasn't a cliffhanger because mm -hmm. right now we we need to uh, start another book for our, our next episode, yeah. so we don't have time to read a second uh, uh, like yeah, a sequel. right away. I mean, right That's away. Like, yeah. 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 Like right now, we don't have the time to right away read one. Like, like I, I, we did the same thing with the Accidental Empress, mm. where we <laughs> read the first book, and then there was like 
kind of a cliffhanger at the end. Yeah. And then it was like, no, we don't have time to read the second one right now. What do we do? <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I'm so glad that there wasn't a cliffhanger. There are questions that I would really like to have the answers to. So when I have time on my hands, I can read the book and yeah, yeah see what happens. <laughs> Okay, well, what's our next question? Um, it's obvious that there are a lot of cultures involved with both the Annexians and the, the, Cruth. the Cruths. The <laughs> he corrected it to truths. <laughs> <laughs> and here's in curls. Em Embry herself has a lot of knowledge about all of the regions. What kind of research did you have to make in order to make your story richer? Uh... This is going to sound kind of ridiculous, but I just went to college. That's, that's how I learned about all these different cultures and things like that. I was an American studies major, and basically that means I took a lot of poli-sci and history classes, and that was just American. But I also have always loved history, and I've loved learning new things about different cultures. Uh, and I mean, my next door neighbor growing up was from India, and introduced me to Indian food and all sorts of wonderful culture. And I, I just over time have learned different things. Uh, but I would say that most of my research for different cultures uh, was from going to college and learning, you know, humanities and stuff like that and history. And it taught me all about other cultures and my own culture. And when you're writing fantasy, you don't necessarily have to use the truth And you can contort everything into what you want it to be for your own imaginary world. And it turned out really great. And that's what's so fun about fantasy is that you can make it your own and make this world filled with like vivid characters and different scenes. And it can be exactly what you imagine. Writing is great. <laughs> Writing is great. I love, I love that she said that. <laughs> Writing is great. <laughs> you know, I think this um, question popped into my head because even though it is fantasy, sometimes there are weird things that we look up as writers. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, we, we talked about this before. You yeah. know, there's this funny thing that people say is like, If you looked up the search history of a writer, <laughs> you would find the most weirdest things ever. You'd think they're like psychopaths or something. <laughs> like, it, it, sometimes they... Yeah. On Facebook, there's like this uh, creative writing group that I'm on. Mm. And <laughs> there was this meme of like... Um, What it, how long does it take for someone to bleed out after getting shot? Or, you know, like, how long, what is the, what happens when you, when you're in a car accident and the car flips over or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> or does the car explode after an accident or something like that? It was like this, this thing in my head where you need to research some of the facts of the story. Like, uh -huh. is this even humanly possible? But I guess in <laughs> fantasy, this didn't even cross my head. Yeah. You know, cross my mind. That um, in fantasy, you, you don't really need that because you can just create your own rules, you know? Yeah. Like, true, even especially with, said, like, yeah. powers, you can just, like, have any kind of powers and just explain, like, not, not even explain it, just say, it's like that. You yeah. don't need a reason why. It's just like that. <laughs> and we eat it up. <laughs> yeah, and we eat it up. <laughs> I love that about fantasy, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a uh, fantasy is such a... There's no limit, you know? Mm. You can create whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. And lastly... Yes. Our... There are two questions that the author combined. combined yes. Yeah. Question. Uh, I guess let's hear her track right away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen to her track. <laughs> hear and listen. Wow. <laughs> so I'm going to combine question three and question 13. And that might be a little bit unorthodox. But your question three was, when the book was merely an idea in your mind, what made you want to have this book written and published? And then 13 is, as a fantasy writer yourself, what advice would you give to the aspiring authors just starting out their journey to becoming published authors? And I feel like these two kind of go hand in hand. So when this book was first an idea in my head, right, I I had already written another series. Uh, and so I knew I just was going to write some more because I love to write. And uh, I had already published the first series. And so publishing another series just made sense. It was just like another it was the next thing to do because I already written one series. Might as well start a new one. As for 
advice I would give aspiring authors who are just starting out their journey. Uh, no grammar. <laughs> like, I mean, that's, that's obviously basic. That's number one. But as far as story goes, I mean, if you have a really good story and a really good plot and really good grammar and a really good editor, you can make something really special. And the most important part is to write something that you want to read yourself. You don't want to, if you hate your book, then there's no pride in it. There's no love in it. And you can't, and people can tell, readers can tell. I was a reader, I I I call myself a reader first before a writer because I I read so much and I love to read. I truly love to read and books are amazing and they take me to a new, another realm. And so I wanted to make something myself. And that's what originally started me wanting to write myself was because I love books. And if you're becoming, trying to become an author yourself, you need to go out there and read and know your grammar. I know I keep saying grammar, but it's so important. And and make your story your all for yourself. You have to make something that you truly love. Because you can, editing can make any, like my, my editor, she says, say, you can make anything good. It just takes some good editing, right? Uh, what you need. And part of editing is making sure that you have a story that you love and that it's something that you can, that you can take criticism on and to contort and change and shift into something that's special and that, and something inspiring. And that's what you're, you know, that's why you write. You need to make sure that you know why you write. And I'm sorry if this is, feels like just rambling, but make sure, I guess the number one thing is make sure you write something that you love. And if you love it, then, then you'll make sure you'll do everything necessary to get it to being published. Make sure that you get to where you want to be. It's all about following those dreams. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm kind of glad that um, the reason of why she wanted to write is because she just loves books mm -hmm. and wants to have her own. And I think that's kind of the same reason why I want to pursue this career. And I've always thought of this reason as it's not enough of a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, I always thought that there should be more of a reason, but... For me, it's just like, I love writing, you know? It's just, there's no other reason for me, yeah. you know? But I'm also like, okay, but there has to be something more important than just love writing. Because if you love writing, you can just um, give up on it from one day to another, you know? It's yeah. just like, where is the, the drive, you know? Like, the discipline in it, you know? Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's always imagining of... Authors like Divergent or The Maze Runner or The Hunger Games, they always have this stronger message that they want to bring over, mm. you know? But with fantasy, it's just a story, you know? Like, there are some lessons to learn in it, but that's not the point, you know? It's like, it's just a story, you yeah, know? It's yeah, like, I, it doesn't have to have a lesson or something to teach, or but it's always, like, the most um, stories that stand out in society are the ones that like have a big big message to tell mm -hmm. you know like and a background and yeah like there's some yeah it's always like this Sadly. society thing you mm -hmm. know like it's always like the hunger games is so timeless you know yeah it is. and it's always because katniss everdeen she stands for something you know mm. and uh the capital it stands for something it stands mm. for something in our existing society yes. you know it reflects something of people how they look at other um like how they look down or how they're ignorant and how this ignorance can make other people have bad lives and it's always like um yeah it, there's always a point you know yeah yeah and that's kind of what i was looking for but i guess it, you, you don't have to look for that deeper it just comes on its own like i'm also wondering if those authors had that message in their head or was it just incorporated into the story later you know yeah. did they have the character in their head first <laughs> or was it the message you know true <laughs> as like, we always struggle with that with with films as well like um like at college they wanted us to do something with a point and a message and yeah like our uk professor was like uh these are t-shirt films <laughs> so you can write a message on a t-shirt and you would like sell the message but 
I felt like no, I want to make films because I want to make films. I enjoy doing making them. Yeah. And um, and also because it's just it's an event that could be lived and it's lived. Hello. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like that's it. It doesn't have to have like an impact. Like an impact. And, or that be the point of it. I mean, yeah. I think if you just make your characters relatable, mm-hmm. you know, that alone is a message. You know, it's yes. like feeling that you're not alone. That in the you're world not or, alone. Yeah, yeah. Or what you're feeling is normal. Or you can what you're feeling is difficult right now, but you can get through it. You know, mm-hmm. if you believe in yourself. And it's always this, yeah, this background of, yeah, yeah. And she made it so simple. And I love that. <laughs> it's the dream. <laughs> it's the dream. It's all about following those dreams. <laughs> and mm. yeah, that was the last of our questions. And I don't think we have any more no, points to tackle. I, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think we have time anyway. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was amazing sort of talking to mm-hmm. Amal Gray. <laughs> sort of talking, yeah. <laughs> And uh, it's great having you on this chapter. And we yeah. were glad you reached out to us, <laughs> yeah. and we enjoyed reading your book definitely. And we would recommend it for other people to read. But I guess if you were gotten to this point, you probably <laughs> already read it and got all the spoilers out. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, sorry or not. <laughs> but anyway, um, we hope you enjoyed this episode, and we hope you enjoyed Emil Gray's presence on our podcast and what she had to say. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. See you. Bye. Thank you for making it till the end of this chapter. I hope you've enjoyed our chapter and if you've enjoyed reading the book as we did. For our next chapter, we have The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue by Victoria E. Schwab.